his twin. Hey folks, welcome back to the first episode of This Week in Photo in 2021. It's gonna be a great year, I'm excited. Uh, to chat with photographers and artists from all stripes over this next year. It's going to be a good time. And to kick all of this off, I get to sit down for the very first interview of the year with my friend Karen Hutton. Karen and I are going to dive into where the heck she's been. And well, she and I haven't spoken in a while, but she's been doing a million things with Fuji, with her iPad, with Procreate, with all this other stuff that she has going on. So we're going to try to scratch the surface of the current state of Karen Hutton. And then we're going to dive into some philosophical discussions, I think, if I could guide the discussion in that direction. But we'll see where it goes. Karen Hutton, welcome to the show. It's, it's a pleasure to see you again. How are you doing? It's a delight and a pleasure to see you, Frederick. And honestly, do you really think you can direct this conversation? I can't. I just, yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the conversations <laughs> you and I have, Karen, are very much like sailing. Right. So right? <laughs> I kind of know where I want to go, but depending on the, the wind ocean and the has tides, its own mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Not that I've ever sailed before. That's something I want to do. I've never sailed. I understand I have. how it goes, I, but I haven't done it. Well, you haven't lived sailing till you like hurl over the side a whole bunch. So um, I've done that. I've That's, done that. I, yeah. I haven't sailed, sailed, but I've been on one of those catamarans in, in Hawaii and you yeah. know, seasickness is no joke. And I don't get seasick. I used to hang out of helicopters taking photos. I don't get airsick or seasick. This time I did. And let me tell you, I, I fed do the not. Fishes. <laughs> oh my God. The fish, the fish lived high in the hog that day for they me. Did. You know what? The one place I don't get sick is in a helicopter. I don't know why. Yeah, me either. I get dehydrated in helicopters. I don't get sick. It's weird. That's good. So <laughs> if, if I, it's weird. If I don't pound water before, then it's a bad trip, you know, in, in a helicopter. You gotta, I have to j just chug water before and after in order not to get that dehydration helicopter thing. So I don't know, but I digress. We have stuff to not talk much, about. Not much, not much, really. <laughs> this be, hey, this is how 2021 is gonna go. So I want high level interviews with awesome people talking about substantive topics that are life changing. That's where we're going in 21. You know, so you're, you the know where else you're the perfect person for this. I I am because yeah, I'm the human Cuisinart of thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> there we go, and there, my friends, the episode is titled. <laughs> there no, we go. We're not, mm. not going to do that. Uh, so okay, let's talk about Karen Hutton for the people. You know, the two or three people on the planet that may not know who Karen Hutton is as an <laughs> artist, uh, purveyor of awesomeness. You know, who is Karen Hutton, and why do you create stuff? Is that is that a question? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought I'd check because sometimes you know Hutton? sometimes you rip and you and I'm like, go ahead, and um, <laughs> who is who is Karen Hutton? Now that yep. is an episode unto itself. Um, well, I mean, I'm a photographer. I'm an artist. I'm a purveyor of awesomeness, um, only because I like to purvey my own awesomeness. Because not about me, but my own joy. Because if I can't entertain myself, who will do it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how you have to think of those things. So, um, so yeah, I'm a photographer and I'm an artist and I do voiceovers and I'm a I'm a human on the planet. I know you and it's it's there's you you you're doing yourself a disservice because you just painted that little sliver of the iceberg that's above the water when I know that it goes it's it's very deep and I think you should be the guide for that iceberg because I I'm not the one to talk going. about it. Okay. That's where we're going. So let's start with landscape photography, for example, uh, this kind of stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with that. <laughs> like that I love, that I have. Or, I or, love wait, that you have or, that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, but wait, or, there's wait, more. <laughs> wait, wait. What about this one? Oh, I forgot you have that one. I love yes. that Lake Tahoe. And it's, mm. as you can tell, it's on metal. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Aww. So so I want to talk about that, right? So yeah. that's kind of in that era, if we want to call it an era, of of your creative journey, creating these that kind of artwork. It's very intentional. It's, you know, just sort of beautiful landscapes. There's a million of them on your website. This is a, literally the tip of the iceberg. What tell me about that phase of your work? What were you going for when you were doing, you know, just putting yourself in nature and capturing it? Well, you know, landscape and that type of photography is just in my DNA. I mean, it's yeah. just I was raised with a camera in my hands. 
my mother's family, you know, you know, my mother was born in 1922. I was dating myself. Best time I ever had. Anyway, uh, she, her family photographed her from the time she was, I think the earliest one I have is like maybe six months old. I don't know how they did that, but there, so her whole life was photographed. And so I grew up with that mindset. So everything was photographed. I also grew up in the country. Um, I talked to the trees and um, <laughs> literally I did grow up talking to the trees and the horses and all the animals and photographing them. And it's just always been a part of me. Um, nature speaks to me. I live in awe all the time when I'm out in nature. It's where I am the most comfortable. It's where I'm the most myself. It's where I get my best inspiration and information and voice of God and all that kind of thing. So that was the natural just kind of evolved out of how I feel about light and the brushstroke of creation that this whole world was created from and like documenting i feel the earth is alive and has a soul and has something to say and i feel like i'm her personal photographer so yeah. i see i see beauty in those ways but the interesting thing is i've also always sort of sensed and experienced an overlay to that that i've never quite been able to convey in photography Although people do tell me that my post-processing has that sort of magical aspect yeah. to it. And in my mind, I've always thought, boy, that's only a, a portion of, of what I'm experiencing out there. And of course, we'll be talking about it. But this year, I found a way to kind of start to convey that. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like there's a couple of tangents on that? So do you feel like mm -hmm. that overlay, is that a way for you to get closer to the the image that's in your mind's eye, whereas just straight photography and kind of you know keeping it photographic it's it's hard to get there now you got to put a layer on top of it and the the tangent on that the slight aside maybe you can answer this together is with when you're creating one of these pieces whether it's the landscape you know that i just showed or one of the newer pieces do you begin with the end in mind or is it more serendipitous you know you're you're walking around and you get inspired and you and the shot starts there how, do, how does karen work I'm going to start with that last piece because yes to that, even though I'll have an idea about like, I'm going to go to Tahoe and shoot a sunset, right? I don't want to say I seek the the experience of awe, but if you also do some research on the whole concept of awe, it is a transformational state of being. They're actually calling it the 11th emotion. And they've done a um, tremendous amount of studies about what it does to your entire system, you know, pulmonary, brain waves, uh, you know, breathing blood, everything. It, you know, awe, being in a, in, in a state of awe has these tremendous health benefits. So I grew up with that and I love it and it's where I feel the most comfortable. So take that one thing, put it side by side with this. When I was young, I was a child, when I was a child, I used to have visions. Um, I just always talked to God and had visions. That's just how I grew up and thought it was normal because I lived on a ranch and who was going to tell me it wasn't normal. <laughs> so, <go>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of them in particular, though, people, some people have heard this story. It was me standing on, I'll just real quickly, standing on a stage. What was I doing there? I don't know. My mouth was open. My hands were out. And this huge column of light was coming down, like washing right through the top of my head, out my body, through my gut, my hands, and my mouth, whoosh, washing out onto this audience. And they were transformed and healed and whatever. And that was maybe eight or nine when I had that. So it, it wasn't like some egotistical thing. It was just one of my visions and I just really loved it and it always felt really good and it felt like home. Yeah. So I spent my life, you know, as I look back, I realize I've spent my life trying to figure out what it meant to live that. And so photography, what is our, what is the creative medium of photography? Light and time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that felt very much like home. So when, so in answer to your question, um, it seems to be sourced from that. And then photography just always felt so natural because I was raised with it. And even my mother's, uh, the Norwegian side of my mother's family, when they came to this country, near as I can tell from the pictures, late 1800s, early 1900s, something like that, they photographed the whole trip on a steamer. <laughs> it was wow, just, really? I saw those and I, yeah, and I was like, oh, then there was really no hope for me. So <laughs> I'm just a photographer. So, but, the overlay has a lot to do with 
this vision and this sense of light and this connection to God and the angels and all this, you know, woo woo stuff that I never used to want to talk about. But now it's just, I don't know, it's just so much a part of what I do that I can't help it anymore. And um, so that's the piece that was, I think, personally, the more people when they say my post processing, oh, there's a magical quality. And I'm like, huh, it must be that. It must yeah. just me be, you know, trying to convey that. And then um, then the new work sort of sprung out of that and the gear that I was using to help me create more of it and a process that I discovered so that, because you know how it is, you don't really have mm -hmm. something until it works, no matter what you apply it to, mm -hmm. repeatedly, you can repeat yeah. it and then you know you have a system. So, you wow, know, that was I'm just a mouthful. I'm curious, like when you, when you when you take a step back and look at your body of work, Right. Do you do you feel like you're you're on a linear path of evolution and it's just changing over time? Like you said, that light going through you and coming out to people. Is it just kind of refining and focusing the quality of that that message that's coming out over time? Or do you see it more as like a you know, it's a jigsaw puzzle that you don't know what the final picture looks like yet. And each each piece of art you create is a piece in that jigsaw puzzle. And you're going to be surprised so, with the rest of us when we look at the final body. I think I'm going to be surprised. And yet I was always driven and I was always driven by the certainty that I was meant to do something, which kind of has driven me crazy and led me at the same time. Um you know, I was suicidal when I was 17. Um, I think I finally, you know, I think it took until my 30s or early 40s to finally really know that I wasn't that anymore mm -hmm. or that that would never come up again. Um, and the thing was about that was the realization that I was here for a purpose and okay, fine, I'll stay and do whatever that is. So what is that? So I can tell you that at one point in my life, I thought I, maybe the thing was to go be a nun. I mean, I was like, okay, so in my, you know, I asked God, he said no, and I'm like, all right, you know, the, I'm doing, you know, like this kind <laughs> of stupid short version of it. So mm -hmm. that didn't, that didn't pan out. And then, um, and then I was an actor and I was a singer and I thought, okay, maybe the thing is to use your voice because there was that aspect, you know, of it. And then as we were talking about earlier, not on camera, but, you know, Hollywood and working and acting and yeah. the whole scene just was not me and then teaching you know because it's about it's about people and bringing light to people maybe that's the thing and using you know and using my voice and voiceover maybe that's the thing and so then it, it's like it never quite it it was a piece and it led to the next but it was never it like i never it it, it never really settled as this is this is what it is so lately through photography and through art and through the, through finding your artistic voice, you know, the whole system of teaching and uh, conveying some of this to people through retreats and other things and, you know, online courses and things like that. It's all part of it, but what the final thing looks like, I'm not 100% sure, but it has a trajectory throughout a lifetime. Yeah. Do you, you ever think about that if, it, if it's on a trajectory and it's on this sort of evolutionary path, and like you said, you've been evolving like VO and Hollywood and photography and, you know, and, and what's the next thing? Do you think that maybe there's you're a pupa right now and the evolution of Karen is something completely different than what we see right now? I pupa. I'm stuck on that word. That's just it's like it's like pimple. I don't like that word. Like well, both of them have something that pops out at the end. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, let's not. Don't get me started on that. Okay, you, you know I, where we we'll go with that. I know, I know. Yeah, there's there's not a good ending to that. Um, I think. Okay, so when I ask that question, what I hear is, I mean, what I have always heard is that I came here for these times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love the movie The Fifth Element. What does all that mean? I don't know. I don't know. So every day, you know, every day my meditation and my prayer is to be of service in the way that I was intended to be. Yeah. And to, you know, right now, let that with the way that you're intended to be right now. Yeah. And just sort of right now and every day. And with this purpose in my in my sense of even when I was young, I, I was like, oh, my God, because I did not love being here for a long time. And I was like, what the hell? 
heck am I doing on this planet? Yeah. You know, this is this is yeah. hell. This is pure hell. Why am I here? And so so I was, you know, informed I was here for a reason. And I always felt like the visions I had about that were always older, you know, later in life. Well, here we are and here we are in these times. And I'm like, is this it? <laughs> what is yeah, it? Am I just sure. going to burst into light? I have no idea. But in the meantime, I'll just, you know, do stuff like keep, this. And keep going. Keep going. Oh, I love it. I love this conversation. Yeah, just, mm. Yeah, this is good. So I want to I want to switch gears. So let's talk a little bit about um, there's a couple things. I have this notepad with like a mind map of how to talk to Karen on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally look at this. Imagine like, my like husband, right poor here. man. How do I talk to Karen today? Let's see. Is she going to be having her latest visionary input or is she going to talk? Oh, anyway. That's that's a tangent on the mind map. No, no. It was more of like there's so much you have you and I haven't spoken in a while and there's so much to catch up on and I want to make the mm -hmm. interview substantive and not you know exactly. that's what the mind map was about um so on that you and i were were talking a little bit before we started recording about this this whole idea of analog versus digital right oh, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know in that that the this is so apropos because i was having a conversation in the twip pro community um uh, with someone about i think the the idea the conversation started with a discussion about apple's new $600 AirPod over ear headphones that they released and quality, you know, digital versus audio or digital versus analog quality. And is there a per perceivable difference? So that's where the kind of discussion started to focus it on this conversation in your world, right? The, how do you just, just start from a high level the analog kind of sine wave world versus the zeros and ones. How okay. do you, how do you, how do you play with that? Like, like where does your mind net out on one being better than the other? Okay. Well, so better, you know, that's so yeah, subjective. subjective. Yeah. So my preference, I will put it that way is I'm an analog girl. I love analog sound. And I always, um, when I first started doing voiceovers many years ago in my own home studio, I, well, I was always pushed to make my sound more digital, and I did for a while. And but digital sound in the way in the way in in high end voiceovers that it exists sounds really soulless to me. It's mm -hmm. perfect. It's clean, and it's yeah. perfect. And there's no artifacts, and there's a low noise floor, and there's just antiseptic nothing. It's antiseptic, and I hate that sound. I don't really don't like that sound. It's devoid of like our voices aren't like that. So an interesting, what makes an interesting voice? It's, it's the life that the voice has lived and, and it's the analog and it's the air and it's, there's moisture and there's, there's things in a voice that are interesting that digital sound cleans out. So I've always loved analog sound and I love like the old Frank Sinatra recordings and recordings you heard in the forties, like with the LA 2A and we're talking audio gear, but there's all this hardware that, I, and I had in you know where we live now we can do it all with plugins but i had all the hardware i, I did the same i don't know if it was the exact, exact same box but i had the same um uh you know well i'm trying not to go too audio, technical there digital well, yeah. processing units and all that yeah and one of them was the same type of box they used on frank sinatra you know to create that mm -hmm. rich full like it has a life in it kind of sound. And I love that kind of sound. And an audio engineer that I worked with, um, he said, you have hair on your, on your sound. He likes, likes a little hair on it because he was an analog guy too. You want a little hair in that sound. And I love that analogy because I love that. And I like it in film. That's what I like about film as well. And prints and things like that is that yeah. quality. It's got to have a little hair on it or. Got to have a little know. hair antiseptic versus like i don't know what's the what's the synthetic versus real right is what kind of where you're going with that yeah that's, that's right. really interesting yeah the, the other side of that coin could be yeah analog is superior because there's nuances in there that you can't get with digital but on the other hand if a tree falls in the forest it doesn't make a sound does anybody hear it so with the digital you can have much broader distribution Oh yeah, you know. Well, so now, you could. So, so right, is, which and is so better? Now, do you want to hear it great, or do you want to hear it right? <laughs> so, well, and the thing is now, okay. So back then, I had this rack. I mean, I had a, you know, we would call it a rack. It's like a big cabinet, and it you yeah. got your layers of hardware. And now, 
what I have, and I had this, uh, you know, three thousand dollar microphone that's renowned for its full, rich sound. And all you needed, all you needed to do was use all this other stuff to really fire it up, and it was incredible. But it's very, very sensitive to space, and I didn't want to invest twenty thousand dollars in mm -hmm. this room in this house where we live now. So, as a result of digital and technology, I now have a shotgun mic that I used to never be able to use because it doesn't. By itself really make my voice sound that good i'm not on it right now but in my in my studio which is in the room next door that and this little box uh made by united audio uh it's called a um uh an apollo twin i have the twin and they have plugins just like we do in photoshop they have plugins and one of them is my last processor oh. i can I pulled up the two to dial it in. I pulled up my, an old audio file that I loved from my big fancy rack setup and dialed it in to match the digital. So this is digital in service of analog through plugins. And I yeah. can literally throw it in my house trailer, a mic, a cable, a laptop, and this little box and record world-class audio anywhere in the world. So yeah, yeah, technology and digital in service of creating your analog you got you you have that flexibility like you say that's audio and the same thing is possible in you know art too mm -hmm. yeah yeah with the visual side of it, it yeah it's interesting mm -hmm. because it's it's you know i mean you've you've been shooting for a bit and you know the, in the photography industry there's there's always an or going on or some kind of versus battle right whether it's film versus digital nikon right. versus Canon, Fuji versus this, you know, or it goes on and on. Mac versus Windows, tablets versus laptops. You know, it. there's always a discussion, which is, in my opinion, I may be wrong. You tell me, in my opinion, which serves as a distraction away from, like what you said earlier, that light that you're supposed to be channeling through you, which is your art and shining it on other people. It kind of right. gets distracted and refracted by all the discussion over the tools that are involved. But the other side of it is that some things that we create are wouldn't even be possible without the tool tools. Right. right. So and that's a segue in this conversation about, you know, you and I were talking, we were chatting back and forth earlier today about your decision to switch from the Mac OS ecosystem, or at least on the computer side, the, the proper computer, you know, with keys and all that, over to Windows. Then when you first, it's so interesting, when you first told me about that, I'm like, because I used to work at Apple, right? So the, my, first, my first reaction was, what? Heresy, yeah. who got to you, you know? Truly, <laughs> it was truly, like, and then I, I know. Then I thought about it and I thought about, who cares, right? I mean, who cares as long as she's, if she's finding the thing or series of things that helps her create easier and brings her joy, who cares what operating system she's using? It doesn't matter. Right. It, it right. doesn't matter, right? So I want to talk about that a bit. But what's, what was the path of throwing your hands up on the Apple world and moving over into the Microsoft world? Well, um, a few things, just without getting too deep about it all. I mean, yeah. I I have always, you know, you and I have always geeked out on Apple products yeah. and everything, and I still I still love a lot of Apple. It's just that where my work is going, you know, to create <laughs> to create the analog layered, you know, amazing thing it, into in with digital means one heck of a lot of power and speed and capability and you know and i'm i'm not super rich so you know price point is a huge issue yeah so every company makes their decisions you know they every person everybody who's in business from the individual to the big companies have to decide who their audience is and they have to funnel their resources into that and what i've discovered um with my like i'm still iOS on the phone and my iPad and, you know, and I still have a laptop, but what I'm converting to is a big powerhouse Windows machine strictly for my image processing because I've literally topped out on Apple. I, I can't afford, you know, their tower. And even then you can't change out components. My husband mm -hmm. is a, you know, he used to build computers so he can build anything, but you can't build anymore with Apple because now that everything's a closed system and they don't, it's not fast enough, strong enough, and you have to use all these peripherals now. And I mean, you always did, but now it's even worse because 
you you know USB C. Oh, it's the future, and I'm like, yeah, but the present you just blew it up and you made yeah. it impossible for me to keep up now. And so you are not building machines for what I do. Yeah. And you see, that's where it ties back into don't decide what's popular, decide what you need. I would rather stay with Apple, but I can't do what I do. I know what I want to do. And I know what it mm -hmm. takes and I cannot do it in that ecosystem. So I've got to move to the one that does it and the one yeah. that we can build out on. Yeah, it's a it's a uh, it's not a religious decision. It's a it's a capability mm -hmm. and technology you're solving for the end result versus right. the you know and the journey, I guess. But it's not tied to any specific brand. It's like if this if this hammer is not heavy enough to hammer this nail, I need to get a bigger hammer. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And there are days I actually want a bigger hammer to <laughs> end the pain. If you know what I'm saying. The pain of the computer. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But it's, it's fun, though. I mean, in part of all this discussion, you know, with with the software and, you know, I, I poo poo on people just sort of talking about gear all the time. But part of the journey, I think, for photographers or people that are doing this as a hobby or a profession is finding out what works. Right. And some people are more let's say vocal about their decisions than other people, but it's, it's a journey, right? And technology is constantly evolving, cameras, lights, tablets, drones, all this stuff is evolving over time. It's easy, I think, to get caught up in that world of, okay, I gotta get the next thing because it's incrementally better than the thing I currently have and lose sight of that light that you were talking about. Like, what are, you, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to be Batman and you need a utility belt with everything just in case villains come at you? <laughs> or, or, or are you actually having villains come at you? <laughs> exactly. Let the need well, determine the, the tool. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, but as you listen to this, it'll be 2021. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just interesting. And, and I think a lot of it, not to not to stereotype any segment of photographers, but it seems like the newer photographers, and not necessarily age-wise, just people that are new to the profession or hobby, mm -hmm. tend to be more obsessed over the gear. And as you become more experienced and realize what it is you want to do with this stuff, then you kind of like, who cares? Like, you, right. I almost become offended when people start talking about gear too much. You know, it's like, I why know. do you care? Is, what, is this stuff I'm doing not good enough? You need to know how I did it? Like, why? <laughs> so. Well, you know, you kind of have to learn how to, I mean, which you do, I know you do, but I mean, yeah. one has to learn how to read between the lines on that because people who kind of get all rabid about the gear just simply, you know, they just haven't evolved to that point, be, like that one step beyond that where they yeah. go, oh, gear in service of. Yeah, yeah. So we're not in service of gear. We're not in service of the technology. We are right. in service of our vision. And you know, when you're newer, even advanced new, you know, you, you, you don't always know what your vision is, right? So you have to keep going back to your own preferences and then how do you trust that without enough experience to tell you? So that's where it gets a little miasmic, you know, in the kind of the mm -hmm. beginning to the advanced beginner stage is, is challenging. And there aren't enough people out there, I don't think, telling folks to trust what you love and get in the habit of following that because you're gonna really need that later. And right mm -hmm. now it will serve you because like for me, like if I were choosing a camera, um, which I've already chosen the camera that I, you know, the, the brand that I use and all the reasons why. But for one thing, when I have people say, I'm like, are you a muscle memory person? Do you like to use your, you know, like I'm muscle memory because I was a, an athlete all my life. So I like, plus I grew up on old fashioned cameras. So I like the whole vintage set the buttons and, you know, da 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 da, da boom, it's ready to yeah. go. Yeah. I don't want to dive into a menu because that stops me in my tracks and requires me to use a different part of my brain than what how I create. So menu divers, like those cameras I can't use. So that rules out a whole bunch of brands yeah. that it are set up for people. It, it simplifies your choices, right? Yeah, I, totally. So, I, so, I so there's... To talk 
I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your talk. No, I'm done. I'm uh, no, I'm I was going to say, I wanted to talk about that because I know you're, 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 you shoot Fujifilm for very specific mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we don't want to make this all about gear because it's all about the art, right? But at the right, same it time, is. it is about the paintbrush. Like you said, it's up, it's about the, the tool that you choose to create that. And that has to, those gears of you and the tool that you use have to match up in order for you to create, right? Whether it right. be the ergonomics of the camera or the operating system on the camera or even just your, your affinity with the, with the worldview of the brand. All that stuff has to be in alignment for you to feel good about using that computer to create or using that camera to create stuff. Right. You shoot Fujifilm. So what right. was your, what's your mindset behind the reasoning of, of shooting that particular brand over a Canon or Nikon or something? Well, Going from DSLR to mirrorless, Frederick Van Johnson. You, <laughs> I remember. You were, there, you were there the day that decision was made. Shall yep. I tell that story ever so briefly? Tell the story. Tell the okay, story just, about your Charlie Brown short... backpack. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, my God. So DSLR, so, you know, landscape photographer, you're out in the elements. You don't want to be changing lenses all the time, so you always have your two cameras and, you know, a few lenses and your tripod and what all the rest of your stuff. Well, my – and so shooting DSLR and big lenses, I, my bag got really heavy. So I started having this problem, and I'm not that big of a person. I'm not tiny, tiny, but, you know, I had this backpack so full of gear, and it was so heavy – and the other thing about being a landscape photographer is that you're scaling, you know, you're in dicey. Let's just say you could die sometimes, <laughs> occasionally, or at least break a limb if you're not careful. So, yeah. so my bag had gotten so heavy, it was starting to like pull me over. I'd lose my balance a little bit, which you do. And I was a dancer and a figure skater and an athlete. So losing my balance isn't that big of a deal because it's easy to catch unless a 25 or 35, you know, five pound backpack is like you're off kilter now your pack is pulling you down so i started falling down a lot mm -hmm. and i had told frederick this you know and he's the he's the king of the tiny little camera little yeah. and i always make fun of him because he likes his little gear and i like my big gear Micro four thirds, fun come on yeah whatever <laughs> and so um he would make fun of me and my big gear so one day we're at a uh we're in San Francisco and we're going to shoot and we're walking down this hill. It was like a nothing. It was like, a you know, you could drive a car down this hill, but it was that, that little tiny gravel and not that steep, but you know, you could slip on it. And I did, mm -hmm. and it should have been yep. no big deal. Should have been nothing. I should have just been able to go bing and catch myself, but no, this backpack overtook gravity and just like, bam, yep. right at his feet, Frederick's feet. He looks down at me with this look on his face. It's like this, combination of terror because are you okay uh shock because wtf what just happened mm -hmm. and the urge not trying not to laugh like he is right now all in the same look and a lot of like you know wow i'm so sorry for you because right now you look like an idiot all of that in one expression in one instant and i was like so mortified i was like that's it this needs to never ever happen again you're, and then you're, he, you were once, totally, you were a turtle. You were a turtle on its back. That's what you're, oh, <laughs> on my a God. hill. I mean, I, I was concerned that you had been hurt, but you, when I found out you weren't, it was. Then, then, I mean, then it, it was, was all comical. bets are off, and now he's laughing at me like he is now. So, anyway, which is pretty much what he always does. Whatever. But the point is that in that instant, I decided that's because I'd been considering mirrorless, you know, when is it time? Because I was a film shooter and it's got to be yeah. really certain quality, blah, blah, blah. And then I started trying all the different mirrorless, didn't like them till a friend of mine. Have you tried Fujifilm? I know you've tried everything else. I just didn't know if you'd tried this one. And I'm like, gee, no, I hadn't even thought about it. So I tried Fujifilm and it's like those of us who love Fujifilm, there's a thing that happens and that thing happened to me and my brain exploded and I was just like, you know, that's it for me. So, and of course now there's medium format and that was always my dream, medium format or large format growing up. Um, and so now medium format. So it's just for me what I needed because the color the you know i have a film background and they have a film background i like the old-fashioned like i had a minolta srt 102 that was my most favorite camera of all the old ones that i had and it's so similar and everything's on the outside and you can program it and just go -ta -ta -ta, take a picture love the images love the experience love the ergonomics you know blah 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 
that all of that fits my sensibilities of what I was looking for. And I switched and never looked back. Wow. And now, now here we are. And you're, you're, you kind of slipped it in that you're shooting medium format on Fujifilm, which means the GFX, right? That big. Right, right. So, so I shoot both. You've got a lot of pixels to play with when you shoot. That I thing, do. Right? And I don't shoot everything with it. So and and fair to say, I am a professional Fujifilm X photographer. So but I'm not paid to say this. It's just the reason I am one is because it so perfectly fits my artistic vision. And just like you were saying, it isn't about the gear and the gear isn't going to make you better. But at a certain point, once you kind of, you know, emerge from the water and crawl toward the land, you know, in your evolution, um, it starts to matter more. I still have the theory, you know, give me any camera. I'll shoot anytime, anywhere, and I'll make a great film, you know, make yep. it. Well, I don't want to say great. I don't want to overstate it, but I'll make a good photo. You know, I'm still shoot with my phone, too. But at a certain point, it does matter. Um for two reasons. One, because as you get more advanced and as you start to settle into having an artistic vision, the tools that help you get there faster and more directly are going to become more valuable because you don't want to waste time. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and the experience should be good so that so that you're not distracted. If you're not a menu diver and you have a camera that's super techno menu diver camera, it's going to drive you insane and you'll never really get where you want to go. So those things. Um, the other thing, well, so two things, well, two things are hitting my mind at once, which is always scary. So what question am I answering first? Medium format or why Fujifilm or what it did to my brain? Cause it did yeah. it to my brain. They're all, they're all related. Go with the, go okay. with the brain, the brain, the brain first. thing. So the brain <laughs> thing was the first big trip I took it on in 2015 was to France. And I had been mm -hmm. to France once before with my DSLR and gone in the same places and tried to shoot and just couldn't cause you can't take a tripod and yep. it's, it's hard to figure out where to set up and high ISO forget it. It's just not even viable. Well, I'd go in there and I'd, and I only had an X-T1, I think the first time I took it, but I kept, and it only went up to ISO 6400, which, which would have been an unusable image with my previous setup. But I was like, well, they say you can do it. And here I am in the, in the uh, Paris Opera House and what is happening? Oh my gosh, it's a dancer. Dancers are dancing and it's all lit and who, whoever, cause I want, I was like, I, I prayed that morning. I was like, or envisioned, I want a special, I want to go to the Paris Opera House. And if I don't get to shoot the actual, you know, theater, then I want my own unique experience. So I have my own unique take of the Paris Opera House. And I was just like, oh, please, I would love that. So I go there and the, the theater was closed. So I didn't even have that option was walking through and taking pictures at 6,400. And I'm like, this is weird. These images look pretty good. So I get into the big, I forget what hall it is. It's all gilded and they had it lit for a video. And these two dancers walk out. Well, I was a dancer and these dancers walk out and it was a rehearsal still. So they let us stay. Once it became filming time, they made us leave. But I got these incredible photos at 6,400 with a 55 to 200 little kit lens of these dancers in this. And I was like, <laughs> and I had never <laughs> been able. So then it became, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So the brain part, I'm sorry, this is so long, but the brain no, part is, great. is Anytime you ask yourself a question, and this is about anything, this isn't just about photography, but if you ask yourself a question, a legitimate question, not one with a lot of like, you know, I already know the answer, but you go, but you like, well, what else could I do? Your brain wants to answer you. That's how it's hardwired. So consequently, I started going in other churches and other buildings and really challenging the camera to see what else it could do. And it was able to do everything I asked it to do. And, and not only that, but do it in that filmic quality that I love. Plus, it has its own features that invite you to try things. So it came with ideas. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, this is my new best friend because I'm getting I'm, I didn't have to just tell it what to do and try to imagine it and hold it in my head long enough to be able to then produce it on the on the computer. I could actually almost produce it in the camera. It's just I have such a fanciful way after that I had to go further, but it got me more than halfway there. Like that camera, the, the, way there. the camera sounds like like a superhero origin story. Like it you is. Know, well, for this me, is, this is Karen before the powers, and then yeah. after the superpowers. Right? Yeah, and I'm not so sure that all my images necessarily. Well, 
Some of the more standard images I made before Fujifilm probably don't look that much different, but the process of getting them there was so time consuming yeah. um, and technically challenging that I just couldn't, I just felt like I was cheating. <laughs> yeah. So, so well, that it, thing. That's technology kind of make, though, right? That's yeah, technology. And it's techno technology is, but it's, is cheating. Right? Well, technology in service of a vision right. Is, right. is is moving with the times and using right. every permissible tool, as my mother used to say, you want to use every permissible tool. So it was a permissible okay. tool that just happened to be geared in the direction that I was trying to go and then mm -hmm. came with other options on top of it. So that opened my mind to, well, what else? What else could you do? And then it, it I didn't have to tamp it down, which is what I was having to do before. Oh, you can only do this? Okay, well, then we'll only do that. And we won't try to shoot in there, but we'll go look and... The best photos are in your memory anyway. I mean, I hate that stuff. So I could take this little thing in everywhere. And of course, it can't, it's only gotten better. So so it's not just dreamer stuff. You know, it isn't just, oh, I love Fujifilm. Like, why? Well, I can mm -hmm. spend a whole episode telling you technically why and how it fits my vision. But that's the thumbnail. And then the medium format is simply that much more in all my personal work that I'm finally able to, able to do now um, that I always envisioned happening on um, medium format, I'm able to do with the GFX. But I can't shoot everything. It, they're different. So I have an X-T3 yeah. and a thousand lenses and the GFX and four lenses. I do different things, yeah. but they're all kind of headed the same direction. It's the right tool for the right job. You don't know, buy a exactly. car expecting that, okay, I'm going off road and then I'm going to go on the beach and then I'm going to do my commute. There's different, different things, different exactly. tools for different jobs. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. People, it's interesting. People get in that, that vein, like everything else has the right tool, right? It's like, okay, yeah. got to have the right knives. If I want to cook this kind of stuff, I got, you know, I need this size TV for my living room, whatever. And then it comes to photography. It's always like, I got to get a camera. And that's got to do everything because it has interchangeable lenses. That means it's different cameras. So, right. of course, there's one camera body different. Yeah, that's a whole nother, a whole nother conversation. Well, Look. you know, really simple uh, lady oriented way to put it is, you know, you have some some gal with really thin hips say, oh, these are the best jeans. But, you know, if you got some booty, you're like, well, I don't know. Does it make my ass look big? I mean, you know. <laughs> These legitimate questions. So the right genes for her may not be the right genes for you. And you know what a difference it makes. Okay. I, I know do. You do. I I'm do. Yeah. yeah. I'm experienced with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> See, you I see just where thought I'd bring it down go. to like every day. You see where you, I see you're trying to pull it back down into the gutter where our conversations normally are. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't, no, I was bringing it down to real life. You took it to the gutter. Okay. Let's be clear. That's what I do. That's what yeah. I do. Military. The, right? That's what we do. Welcome to our conversations. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, there will be more. Um, <laughs> let's, let's take all of this, all these arrows, as you can tell, see, you're filling out my mind map. All these arrows are pointing towards, we talked about just sort of the, the driving force and that light and the visions and all that. Then we talked about your transition from Mac over to windows for your mm -hmm. desktop work and why, um, the next thing I want to talk about is sort of the iPad and how mm. that factors in to this latest evolution of Karen Hutton's body of work, which is the next brick in that. So tell me about that. You and I were talking last week a little bit about Procreate and the iPad and how you've, you're have you evolving into more of an illustri illustrative way of working for some of your work. Why? Why are we going in that direction? So how did it start? Well, so... It never starts at the beginning for me. It always seems to start in the <laughs> middle somewhere. But yeah. someone showed me, um, showed, somebody showed me Procreate, who is a photographer, and she showed me how she goes, oh, it's really cool because, you know, you can take the, the blur tool and choose a brush and then go over your photo. And I watched what it did to the photo and I'm like, oh, oh my God, what is that? I don't know. It just like every hair that in my Fuji body moment. stood up. <laughs> Yeah, it was a Fuji moment. Exactly. And so um, I was like, holy cow. So it stuck in my, it was in my craw. So it stayed there for a while. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. But I was really busy last year, leading retreats, you know, in Italy. Where were we? Colorado, Italy, Truckee, workshops online, you know, uh, 
taught speaking and traveling just so much last year. And I didn't really, I, I would fiddle around with it for a minute and realize I needed to learn something else, but I didn't know what it was. So the end of last year, this desire to do something more artistically in this this push, I just sort of like, you know, you, I always talk about your muse, right? Mm-hmm, your mm-hmm. muse, letting your muse lead the way. Well, my muse was kicking me in the butt. And I'm like, what? What? What do you want? What? You, like, ah, you're driving me nuts. And so once work had, you know, spooled down last year, is before coronavirus hit. And um, uh, somewhere in there, it was like, okay, okay, now we've got time now. And this urge and this sort of nudge, this desire, this hunger for something more. I'm like, well, what is it? What is it? And I kept hearing procreate, procreate. And I'm like, fine. So I pulled it out and I started messing around. It got hooked. And I started messing around with my photos because that was the simplest thing. I just start with the easiest. What is the most available and the simplest? (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my photos were the simplest. And then I started playing with brushes and the way the brushes work in in Procreate and what you can just just take the blur tool and some different brushes and let's see what happens. You know, just keep it simple. And it blew my mind. And I was hooked and I kept playing and um, created some I call. So now I have like four different types. So and so on the computer, I use Photoshop. And I use Procreate so that, so that my flow then tends to be if I'm using a photo, which I now do it in a whole bunch of different ways. But in the beginning, I just took a photo and I was like, what does this brush do? What does that brush do? That's cool because I had been I just had this idea of this kind of art that I wanted to create. I'd seen it on walls all over the world and hotels and businesses and offices and in coffee shops, I'd seen it in different museums and I'd seen it in different places. And I'm like, there's something about this kind of work and there were different types. And I'm like, I think I can do something like that. I don't know why I think I can do that. But then all of a sudden I started to see it possible and happening and procreate using my own photos starting that way. And oh, it's, it's evolved well beyond that now. So I tend to do procreate, then take it over to Photoshop for the finish. And what are, you, what are you finishing in Photoshop? And Procreate, and Procreate is a strictly an iPad app, yes. right? It's not it's yeah. not iPad and on. It's the, very expensive. It costs ten dollars. Right, for which life. it can't it can't be good if it's only ten dollars and there's no right? subscription. What are you talking oh, about? Must be, I mean, and it's so deep. It's sort of like you know when you introduced me to ScreenFlow, how deep it yeah. is, even though it's yeah. not Premiere, it's deep. Procreate's like that. I'm not sure how how much how deep it is, except that it's way deeper than I'm even working now. I still have more to learn, way more. Well, for, um, for and people that don't know what it is know. though, what what is Procreate, right? What is it? If and people may be saying, yeah, I have an iPad, but I got Lightroom on there. I've got Photoshop on there. Why do I need this Procreate thing? There's even Affinity Photo out there. Why, why do I right. need Right. Oh, my God. And affin- learning Affinity Photo is on my list, too, for a whole other set of reasons. I don't know if I'll ever have time to get there. But Wait for so, another and Procreate, Fuji moment. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So Procreate is basically um, – how do they actually define it? While I'm talking, you look it up. It's a like a graphic art – you know, kind of comes under illustration, graphic art, digital heading – so you ha- use the Apple Pencil and the and the iPad, and then you have brushes like I want to use this oil brush, and you know you can paint. People paint, you know, create these yep. amazing paintings that look like you you did it with oil paint. They do it in Procreate. Um, I'm learning some really basic things, but the interesting thing is I'm learning to paint from my photographs. Interesting I'm, I'm a, as a basis. Yeah, because I'm because of the light and shadow and the way the way that I use light and shadow. So my stuff is going to tend to have similar things in it because I'm using the photograph. But I sent you one this morning that I did from scratch. I didn't use a photo at all. I did it from scratch. And you said, I can see you in the art. And I'm like, that's kind of the whole point uh, where that's kind of natural or I guess is bound to happen. But yeah, I'm learning. I have a friend who goes, I want to learn how to paint. I need to learn how to use light and shadow and, and create depth and stuff. And I said, start with your photos in Procreate because it'll teach you. Yeah. You know, when I look at Procreate, I think it, and I, I'm on the website now and I'll, I'll link to it. if you. How don't do know they describe it? it? Uh, they, they don't. Like on the front yeah, page, see, that's the hard, that's, yeah. it just says more than an update. You know, they deliver exclusive creative tools and exciting new features, but they don't. 
that's on the front helpful. page they never say what it is you know I there's the app of the year i can't stand apps and things like that that don't define themselves this is a fill yeah. in the blank come on yeah. you know what you yeah. are yeah I, yeah don't expect me to know but when i look at mm -hmm. it I, I feel like it's a blend between uh painter you remember painter so mm -hmm. a blend between painter and illustrator it feels like okay. it's it's kind of in there where it's got the some of the technical and precise features that are in Illustrator and then more of the analog uh, organic painting features and pressure sensitivity and kind of weird looking brushes that Painter had. So, yeah, right. it, it feels like it, it fills that block and none of yeah, which but you the can nice do thing about, very well nice in Photoshop. The nice thing about using the Apple Pencil is it's very precise. So the so yeah. there's like no delay and it's super precise and you really do feel like you're you're painting. Um, you know, you have that brain to hand to, you know, what am I trying to say? Uh, that, paper? That connection. Paper. That connection. Yeah. 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 As opposed to like, I always used a Wacom before. Um, and now I can't use my Wacom anymore because now it's not precise enough and it's too slow from using. <laughs> you, so I'm going to have been, to. Uh, you've been ruined. You've been I've ruined been by, a little bit ruined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird yeah. because the only thing that's precise enough and quick enough is the little external touchpad. That's what I use in Photoshop. I know everybody's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it's the only thing I can be that precise with. I don't, and that doesn't hurt my wrist. And, you know, I will feel little mechanical things yeah. with my, my right hand because I'm right-handed. So yeah, it's kind of weird. So cool. And you're, I'm not are quite you sure on the big iPad? Are you, the, are you in the, are you in the 11 inch or the, the, the bigger iPad? The big one. The big one? Yeah. I just, well, like, big, I, well, I was telling mine, you, I just got one of those. I'm excited. How, about so it. how big is yours? Is it bigger than 12.9? Because that's what no, mine is. That's the biggest 12.9. Okay. That's yeah. That's yeah. what mine is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll so, show you how to uh, use it. You'll get, you'll get all hooked. Yeah. And that's you'll, what I want You know, I, it, I was going to ask you that in this interview. I know you've, you've done some work with Smug Mug, um, Kelby One and, you know, training in that, that world over there. I was going to, after this, I'm like, okay, let me go find some Karen Hutton procreate tutorial so i can dive in does that exist anywhere uh you mean me teaching it or, yeah. or tutorials oh you. no not yet <laughs> I, not, not yet i'm i'm actually going to i'm thinking i'm thinking in all new terms for 2021 and what i want to do and how i want to do it and what i'm willing to do and put the mm -hmm. effort into so i'm considering there are so many good, really good free tutorials out there for how to use Procreate. But mm -hmm. there's a particular thing that I've done with my photos that I think photographers might find interesting. And I might do something with that. I've got to figure out the right studio set up for it. And I wish you would just come over and, and invent it for me and set it up so I could just sit down and do it. But there you go. Yeah, you haven't really taken me up on that offer, so <laughs> I know. you kind of suck. I just want to say you kind of suck for that. So, I but know. that's okay. I know. I know. I know. We'll we'll make it happen twenty twenty one since we're we're both on a similar side of the country, even though a couple hundred miles away, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. we're not that far. Apart. We're not that far no. apart. But um, yeah. but yeah. So I, so I might do something like that. But um, but honestly. I'm not going to be one of those people that just kind of like turns out all these cool little tutorials because even these quick little tutorials take time and that's not. They do. Yeah. So again, it's just like choosing camera gear. You got to, I can do so many things, but what do I really want to focus on? Cause they all take time and yeah. you know, they all take, take something. And so what, instead of the 10 things, you know, what are the three things or the four things that you're going to focus on? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a Most lot of that going around for this year, you know, because of, mm -hmm last year's dumpster fire i think a lot of people are making some what's really important to me right you know, choices well, and decisions. i mean that's you know that's like torment in, in service of good that's like some of the yeah. good that came out of all this is a clearer eyes yeah pressure things. pressure mm -hmm. and fire turns coal into diamonds or dust <laughs> You have a choice. You have a choice. Yeah. Have a choice. Yeah. You have a choice. All right. Well, let's wrap this one up um, with kind of a look at where it's going, right? So what what you kind of teased about it a little bit, but what does put a finer point on what 2021 and beyond look like for Karen? You know, where, where well, do you put your arrow? So, <laughs> you know, 2020 involved doing things I, I hadn't done. I built, I rebuilt my photography website from the ground up, karenhuttonphotography.com um, with it. 
Smug Mug. Oh, Smug Mug. Oh my God, we should do an episode on Smug Mug. Yeah. They have saved my life and made my life so much better. It's redonkulous. So, but I rebuilt my web. Let's. That's another conversation. It's just a fact. Um, rebuilt my website, a photo website from the ground up with a different idea in mind. So I did it in a very specific way that I didn't even know was possible. And I learned was on Smug Mug, which kind of blew my mind. And then I built from the ground up KarenHutton.art, which is where I'm putting my new digital art. Some of which is the, you know, photo centric stuff that I talked to you about that I yep. created from the photos. And some of it is stuff I created from scratch. Um, but it's all the kind of more artistic and I call it whimsical reveries because they're all like rever they're because it's like in in a reverie I'm kind of like hmm about a certain feeling like how, what would that idea look like what would that feeling look like right so yeah. where does this take me so to me those are reveries and I tend to have a whimsical take on most things because I like to laugh a little bit. You caught one this morning. Yeah. And um, I sent him a piece, and he found this one little thing that I didn't think anybody would notice, but cracked me up. And he found that immediately and sent me the screenshot. <laughs> this! And I'm like, you're the only person I know that would find that. That's so oh, awesome. I saw it. That's the first you thing know? I saw. <laughs> yeah. And so I call it whimsical reveries. And then, you know, like sunlight for your soul is what yeah. I call it, because that's how it should feel. And for me, when someone says, I can't even describe how incredible this makes me feel to, to look at this and experience this piece. That's why I do it. That's that light through to the art thing. So when somebody has that, and then they try with words like calm and peaceful and, and like, okay. And like feeling okay, where I didn't feel okay before, you know, that kind of stuff. Then I know it's has, it's having the effect, the desired effect, because that's the light coming through and that's the manifestation of it. So blah. Um, so, so taking the, I thought, oh, I'll just build another website. That'll be so simple. And I'm like, oh, now I have two businesses plus teaching. Yeah. Okay. I have just taken on way more than I thought because, you know, the new art, I could see it in hospitals and medical centers and healing centers and places where people just want to have that whimsical, like, <gasps> feeling. I, I feel the same about a lot of my photography, but it fits in different areas. So I'm trying to adjust the out, you know, the outflow of the art itself into different markets. And it's new, you know, yeah. fine art market, galleries, you know, uh, you know, mass collectors you know like the whole the whole fine art thing it's a new world for me because i've taught my whole life yeah and i want to continue teaching but i don't want to do it the same old same old way so i'm sort of reinventing that for myself still working with kelby one because i adore them and they let me you know teach what i feel is important because it's always a little bit different than what other people tend to do so i really enjoy that partnership and i enjoy that way of of teaching so I have I have a travel. I'm taking part in the travel conference, um, January 2021, um, which I think is going to be available after the fact. So that's not totally not evergreen, mm -hmm. um, but that sort of thing. And then there's you know if the world opens up, I've got some retreats and workshops that are kind of in the if this then that planning stages in <laughs> yeah. Italy and Wyoming and other places. So we'll see. We'll see. I. I don't want to only teach. I've only taught. And uh, I want to continue my partnership with Fujifilm because I love it. I love the people I work with and the projects that I get to take part in mean a lot to me. Um, yeah. So I'm really pursuing work that means a lot and I feel fulfill the purpose for which I was put here. I love that. I love that. I love, I love the perspective of looking at 2021 as, you know, it was the first it was the what is this kind of year and then it, it then it went to this sucks <laughs> kind of year and then to hopefully 21 will be like you said if this then that right <laughs> so we're moving into that if yeah, this so then you, that so phase. you know being able to pivot like you've always yeah. said you've always said this you know having a business that is strong but able to pivot on a dime yeah. you yeah. know that's 
kind yeah, of how I'm thinking. It's good. You got to pivot. You got to pivot based on the the current events, the reality. It's you got to pivot based on whatever the zeitgeist is of the area mm-hmm. in your genre, and then you got to pivot based on the stuff that you like because stuff that I liked two years ago. I'm not necessarily into right now. Right. So right. I don't have to, exactly. I don't have to be the Frederick of 2018, 2019. I can be the Frederick of today and it's different. It's completely right. different. Which goes back to, you know, artistic voice. When I first started teaching, you know, and naming it, calling it, naming it, teaching it, finding your artistic voice. And, you know, my retreats are, you know, the artist's voice in whatever location we happen to be in. The thing about that, well, I used to get some pushback when I first started talking about it because people would, would equate it to style and that you don't want to just promote a certain style because that's, you know, you're going to get stuck in a style. And I'm like, there's no way you would get stuck in a style because finding your voice and always asking yourself the questions, it evolves with you. Mm-hmm. You're not yeah. static. You know, as humans, we're, we're hardwired to evolve, to grow, to understand more, to change. Um, you know, there's such punishment in this society for mistakes you made 10 years ago. Well, people grow and evolve. That's the nature of humanity. That's the nature of who, how, we're, how we're wired. So to be able to have a, an art form, um, a, a way of expressing or a business or whatever that can grow and evolve with you, and reflect who you are is, I think, the best merge of, um, you know, personal and business that you can possibly achieve. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, let's leave it with this. I want to give you the final word, Karen Hutton. Um, People that are watching and listening to this, typically photographers or artists of some sort, if they are, they're looking for a nugget of inspiration from you, so because they want to maybe move in the direction that, that you're moving in with either landscape or the more illustrative type work, what should they do? What should they do at the beginning of 21 to start themselves on a vector towards, you know, going in that direction with their art? Well, I would, I always start with questions. The first thing anybody, when anybody comes to me and says, well, whatever question, you know, whatever question, I always answer it with a question because you have to start asking yourself questions like, you know, why do you photograph? Do you want to be, do you want it to be a business? Do you want to document your life? What do you love? Do you love street photography? Do you want to shoot portraits? Do you like people? Um, do you love nature? You know, keep asking yourself the questions that keep taking you, that lead you in the direction. You'll never go wrong doing that um, because the mind wants to answer them and you will get clarity and start to understand what it is you really want, even if you don't know now. Love it. All right, we'll leave it with those salient words. Folks, if you want to catch up with Karen, head over to karenhutton.com and karenhutton.art, right, is the new Mm -hmm. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. head over to those locations or just Google Karen Hutton and you'll see a million things and tangents that you can you can use to connect with her. So cool, Karen, thank you so much. You got to come on um, multiple times this year and okay. we can talk about separate things. We could talk about, we could dive into philosophy. We can dive into smug mug, uh, pro, yep. procreate. We could try, we can track your experiences with your transfer from Mac to Windows. Oh, There's so much to talk about. <laughs> so, it's daunting, but I'm determined. Will Will Karen Hutton be back to the Mac in 2022? Will be the question. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I can't. I can't function. <laughs> All right. We'll see. So, yeah, they, they've got some interesting. Won't they've got some interesting machines coming out. You know, with that M1 chip. So we'll we'll have to see. And you're we'll buying see. one for me. You're so good. Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it should be. I'm I'm seeing notifications that it's been delivered. It should be on your front porch right now awesome awesome i can't wait to open it yeah yeah the the ghost package open it let me know it's (laughs) yeah it's invisible but it's there really just imagine if you can believe it right Mm -hmm. all right karen well thank you so much for doing this you have a happy new year um as we record this it is new year's eve 2020 so Woo-hoo, you are, honey, you are my celebration. Okay. Yeah, you are mine, right? This is, this is the end of the line. Um, <laughs> but it is not the end of the line, right? Just no, it's the end we, and the beginning all in one, which is perfect. Yeah. We are, it, it's like, it's like the hub of time. And yeah, what did we say? Is. Photography is time. The medium is time and light. And now yeah. we sit where time changes. That's right. And we're in That's the right. light. 
So there photographers you go. Are, photographers are time travelers, and that's what we do. Yes, we are. Awesome. All right. You take care, and thank you. Enjoy your, thank enjoy you. your next year. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who was interested enough to watch this whole stinking thing. This is Twitter.